Okay, this is our first episode of Knitter Be Damned. Good morning, everybody. We have our beer. Philip, show them your beer. Yes, I have my beer. We got my knitting. And my crocheting. I'm working on another strange friend. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to have a cigarette. This will be the prelude to our show. Yeah, I actually had some sewing to do, but I was told that I had to crochet on here because we were told that it wouldn't be liable, reliable entertainment if we didn't have crocheting and knitting on our show for some of the sites that we're on. I thought that was a little strange. We were on the impression that it's just two men knitting. Sorry, I've already had a little beer in me. <laughs> um, and it happens fast. But that's the whole point of this. Yeah, absolutely. This is like, I guess you could say, the manly version of a stitch and bitch. Okay? Fine. Yeah. I'll take that. It's a gay stitch and bitch. Well, that doesn't have anything to do with it. I'm sure there's some lovely fellas out there that look like rednecks and knit that aren't gay. Well, that's fair, and I hope that's true. Yeah. I believe that's true. Yeah. Um, however. However. Like Milo. We, going we're going to add it. I'm going to say He's it. He's going there. I'm going right there. <laughs> like Milo said, you can't call me a racist. You can't call me a bigot because I like to suck dick. So, on that being said, we will let that go. Uh, that's going to all be edited. <laughs> shouldn't be, but fine. Such are yourself. Yeah. I want it family friendly at least. Milo's family friendly. Tree as we drink a beer and crochet. Okay. Hey. There's your family friendly hour. What family doesn't have a crazy Uncle Gregory? Okay? Yes, there's a lot of us. Okay, so tell them what you're working on. Well, I'm working on one of my strange friends. I haven't decided if he's going to be a giddy up or if he's just going to be a uh, you know, what his character is. I usually let the yarn tell me what it wants to be. Because um, I have like three or four villages that I work from for my characters. What a masterful crafter. I just let the yarn decide what it's going to be. I do, because it, it I mean, I learned how to do this, but still, I get, I get, sometimes the yarn is smaller, and I'm learning this. Um, so you get smaller pieces, so I have to make it something else because it's not, it hasn't ended up being what I want it to be because I follow this pattern so strictly. Well, let's just show people, if you're not aware of Philip's strange friends, um, this is what they look like. There's one. Yay. Um, here's another one. I always wanted to make kids Yay. toys. Yeah. And uh, what was it, about six months ago, I taught Philip the, the concept of amigurami. Amigurami. Which basically teaches you how to make your own shapes and that sort of thing. And if you can master that, then you can create anything you want. Which is fun because I'm not a master yet. I haven't, I'm have i just on a hundred strange friends. Yes, he has done a hundred of them um, in six months. And I believe in the concept that a master of, a, of, of this or any other ideal should be able to make a hundred of these things in a row and they have my signature on them because of how they were made, which is what I'm looking for. That's why, you, you know, my strange friends all look, you know, they're all different, but they all have little slight little, the, the same themes because I'm still learning how to do the, the craft. Uh, so I'd never call myself a master crocheter. I'm still learning to make uh, circles. Yeah, just don't forget, this is only gonna be 20 or 30 minutes long. Well, we haven't decided that yet. We're only at what at this day. The record time is three minutes forty three seconds. It's counting. only been three minutes. Yeah, that felt like it took forever. But I can talk a lot. <laughs> yes, he can. You told me this. Yeah, he can ramble. I can ramble on. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and then he we were having alcohol in the mix, so I mean that obviously. Well, that's what's going to make this so much fun mm -hmm. is that it's going to be. No pretense, no pretentiousness. I guess those are the same things. But anyway, you know what I'm saying. There's going to be no snobbery. Oh, and speaking of, that was going to be the, one of the highlights of what we're going to talk about today is yarn snobbery. Which I'm new to, so I don't quite understand it because I love places like Joanne's Fabrics. Okay, now tell them why this, this came about. Philip was at Joanne's earlier today, and there's the first mark right there. As a lot of people give you a hard time for not shopping at your local yarn store. I am big, big fans of local yarn stores. Unfortunately, I am too poor to afford <laughs> to buy their beautiful yarn. Yes. However, if you would like a mention of your store in exchange for me using your yarn, feel free to send it, which we have had on occasion. Yes, yes. Um, I love those deliveries. They're they're kind of fun because they're colors that I wouldn't normally pick to use. Yeah. Um, or or use yarn them, that we've I, never even experienced before, like yes. especially the, we have to find him and, and get an interview with him. The guy... 
he and his partner uh, hand dye and, yes. and spin their own wool, and they sent me a bunch of stuff, and it was awesome. Uh, the it was about Island, a year yeah. ago. That's why I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but we'll have to do something with him soon. Yeah, it was beautiful stuff yeah. to work with. It really yeah. was. Um, oh, but then back to Yarn Snobbery. Okay, so he's at Joanne's, which already is a nick if you're uh, a Yarn Snob. You're not supposed to shop at the big boxes. Whatever. But with a 50% discount, you can damn be, able to be sure that we'll be there as often as we can. possible, yes, yeah. yes. Um, he said, when he came home, he said, you know, they, they saw this huge sale of all this yarn right in the middle of the aisles, and I was like, I bet you it was Karen, wasn't it? It was like one of those yarns. It was, uh, it was uh, like uh, one of Red the big, Heart and, again, and Red Heart. Uh, uh, what's the lady that's on the spinning game show? Uh, oh, Vanna White. White. Vanna White, yeah, all of that yarn has a purpose. It may not be the best quality stuff, and it's always usually, well, it is always acrylic. They have the best, some of the best colors, though, I have to say. Both of those brands have really bright, fun colors. But but that kind of yarn has a place. So when you have yarn snobs that say, oh, I'd never touch acrylic, and I'm like, you know, it has a versatility that, you know, I wouldn't make a sweater out of it, but I damn sure would make a blanket because I could pick it up and throw it in the washing machine. And not worry about pilling and uh, Well, it uh, might pill felting. eventually, but, I mean, if it's a blanket, it looks worn and weathered, and that means it's comfortable. Right. Unless you got babies, you're not going to be washing that blanket too often anyway. Yeah. So. so, we've never been a big fan of the whole, if you're a knitter, you have to go, well, you know that there's a tribe of knitters that, that's out there that have the... Uh, elitist mentality of when it comes down to what kind of yarn you should use and um, I'm sorry but I think just the craft itself is enough that makes you a knitter and if you don't buy the really expensive stuff it shouldn't mean that you're in any way inf inferior to the craft because I tell people all the time when they start learning how to knit um, don't go buy the expensive stuff if you're just learning if you're <laughs> taking your first steps of picking up a needle then you really should go with the inexpensive well, I'll, acrylic. Well, I'll, I'll say this on that matter, too. Um, I find some of the really expensive stuff hard to work with because it can be fragile because of its expense. I mean, it's yeah. made by, you know, it's got it's made out of animals, fur, and, and whatever, and uh, because of that, it makes it tear apart easier. So somebody who's just starting isn't going to want to go that route anyway. They're going to want to stay with something that's a little got a little more structure to the, so I can do this and not pull it apart, which I've done with the other stuff without even thinking about it twice. Like, it would happen at the tips of my fingers, I would pull apart this yarn. And by the way, my own uh, local yarn store is a good five miles from here. And uh, Now, it used to be up the street. It used to be up the street, actually. But uh, they've moved, and so, believe it or not, in a town like Orlando, I think we have two places, and they're not actually even in Orlando. Mm -hmm. They're in Winter Park and over in Altamont. Um, that's as far as I have gauged, but there aren't any local yarn shops for us to actually frequent that are close enough by. And someone may say, five miles, that's nothing. Well, we, we do, don't, we we don't do have, have a car, so. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, is, is mildly on purpose. But to say, though, we do have a, a knitting culture in the area of Orlando. We go to our Methodist church all the time. Yeah. Uh, to their thrift store, and uh, we just donated yarn to them because they, I forgot what they called themselves. Um, oh, the Nitwits. The Nitwits, yes. yes. And they make, um, they actually are a bunch of uh, old, older women, um, I believe. They, uh, they meet Wednesday they, morning at 9.30 in the Fellowship Hall. Yes. I'm going to crash it one day. I told them to show up and just start knitting. I'm sure they'll be very accepting, but I'm going to have to do a, we'll have to do a, a, a broadcast of that someday too, you know, because I love, I love my little old ladies, you know. And they're very friendly. They're ridiculously yes. friendly. They love it when we come down there. Um, I guess I'm giving it up to the Methodists. I don't know if that's... He's giving a thumbs up to the Methodists. I'm giving a thumbs up to the Methodists. You know, they, <laughs> I grew up with them having gay choirs and things like that that were, they would allow in their churches, whether or not they were actually part of their um, ceremonies. I'm supposed uh, to be knitting. Otherwise, we're going to get in trouble with some of these yarn groups. Well, I've continued. I'm actually you using better the Better continue camera knitting. Otherwise, this is not the right group for that. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, I'm working on a teddy bear. As, as many of you know, that's pretty much what I knit is... Teddy bears. That's that's my income. Although my favorite are his elephants. Oh yeah, I also yeah. did an elephants, rabbits, tigers, and lions. Yes. Here's one of my little teddy bears. There you go. <laughs> Have fun yes, with we, that. I guess we're supposed to self promote a little bit. We are supposed. to Sorry, I, I'm really new at this. So uh, if I if I don't do tell it me properly, that's not the I cutest thing now. you've seen all day. They really are cute. Adorable. Actually, I think on our, a couple of our shows, I think we should ask our uh, customers, I guess is what we would call them, our... Uh, our supporters. Our supporters. 
who have sent us pictures of getting yes. bears, and if we can share those on our show and be like, hey, you know, these are the people that are supporting us to do this. Um, right. I'm able to do this now full time with what I'm selling online. Um, you know, we're 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 living by our own means. Yes, but we are. We, uh, we're doing a good job of it too, when you consider. Yes. You know, um, we are very fortunate that we have so many great supporters that have wanted to see these two guys actually make a run at succeed of knitting and crocheting um it is really kind of a dream come true um i ended i have a lot of self-esteem issues uh, even though i may not put it off as that gregory teaching me how to do this has made me believe in myself more to choose someone that they can either make clothing for themselves or even i make fun things i, I that's my thing I, I think uh people and children and whatnot should have toys all the time throughout their lives so even if the names of my uh, friends are a little off or a little more adult. That's the point, you know, because everybody should be able to have a little something to smile, to, to, to laugh at, or grin at when they walk by or see it, um, and to realize that we're all a little different. Yeah, you know, that you don't get to see on television. Like they're throwing all of this stuff at you. All these, this, these crazy weird disorders are now becoming normalized in our society. What's going on? Um, yeah. Uh, what was it today? The, the date today is the 23rd of February, 27th of February. I'm really bad about dates since I'm not working for the man anymore. Uh, uh, Sometimes we have to even look at a calendar to see what day of the week it is. But that's just life. And I guess I have to be careful how political who we get because I don't want it to be about that. I just want it to be us talking about our... Why not? Well, Why I, can't it just be like a stitch and bitch? I have seen some of those stitch and bitch groups though where they... Please don't talk about politics or religion. I'm like, well, screw that. Why not? Why not? I mean, Those are some of the best conversations. By not the way. only that, everything in the world and everything that dictates their life is based on politics and religion. Yeah. So why we've has got politics and religion just coming out our asses at the moment, as far as the the media says? So. I'm going to give you a great lesson mm. in constraint <laughs> in learning how to say what you just said without using a curse word. Well, I have to say that studies show that intelligent people tend to curse a little bit. Well, let's say let's say somebody decides to do you live on air and uh, on a network television show to talk about your strange friends and the first thing out of your mouth was shit and ass. <laughs> they have a seven second delay. That's all I got. But they won't ask but I you back. Uh, I'm, actually, I'm actually pretty good. Uh, since this is the first time, obviously, I'm, I'm taking some license with it. I'm, I'm enjoying myself a little more than I probably should. Yeah. Um, because I've got to get used to being in front of a camera, uh, I was told that I'm supposed to not act like the camera's there. Well, all I'm doing is crocheting and talking to you, so I need to act like I'm talking to you and talk to him at the same time. Look, we've lost our sunlight. Well, that's all right. We're both pale. I think the darker it gets, the better it'll be. I am actually accustomed to being in front of the camera. Yes, 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 yes. I smile like a fool for a long time. And then but I got to tell you, though, <clears throat> you know, the, the couple of times I was on Huffington Post Live, I have learned not to accept their request to go live again. Did they shut you down or did they bleep you? I forgot what happened. No, they just kind of railroaded me. Um, uh, they, they took something I said completely out of context. And that seems to be happening every time, any time I make any kind of public statement. Well, look everything, at everything is taken out of context. Mm -hmm. Like the first time I was on Huffington Post Live is because they wanted to do a broadcast about a guy who knits. Well, not necessarily just a guy, but a guy who looks like this, like a guy who looks like he should be yes. at NASCAR with a <laughs> Mountain Dew. I say to my husband all the time, I said, uh, you know, with his, he's a, uh, um, what was your disorder again? I apologize. My disorder? Oh, uh, what do you, your agoraphobia. Oh, yes, I am agoraphobic. Uh, Sorry. Which is funny because he's very—he actually very—he's a kind man. He talks to people all the time. He's very friendly, um, but he does have a fear of people. So I tell him sometimes you dress like a homeless redneck guy so people leave you alone. You know, you can go from here to there without. I, I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll edit that one out. Yeah. Now, see, that was going to be the segment in my show called "My Husband Said What." <laughs> <laughs> that was the part. Absolutely. Because I do do that. He I does. Do that. He, 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 I'm trying to make he sense. He does that people. to me all the time. He's like, you look like a hobo. And that's why. And I'm like, you know, first of all, I don't look Sexy like a hobo. Sexy hobo sex. I don't look like a hobo. Okay. Well. Oh, wait. W before we get letters from the, the hobo homeless community. Yes. Trust me, the homeless, you know, they're fine with the term hobo. Yeah. Forget it. They have bigger issues than their sensitive feelings. 
Trust me, I was there. That's how I got started knitting. I was homeless. And this was the only talent I had that I could use as an income. Come well, you believe in charities anyway, so... Well, but then, you know, I don't think it's the homeless that are going to come at me for saying hobo. <laughs> but I do think it's these activist groups that are going to say, you know, that's no way to talk about the homeless. I'm like, screw that. Unless you've been homeless for a while, you have no idea what you're talking about. Well, I'm about. sorry. As we got going on right now, again, in politics, I'm not supposed to talk about. <laughs> okay. So, trainees. <laughs> yes, they've been big in the news lately. Big in the news. Big. Who knew that they were the number one uh, marginalized group in the history of the world? Well, I gotta tell you, you know, we're both gay, not that that should matter, but it's from personal experience mm -hmm. and the way that we have lived in the gay community that we always call them trannies because we don't know if you're transsexual, transgender, transvestite. You just don't know. So yes. we just call them all trannies. But now suddenly that has been kind of stricken from the, the vocabulary usage that you're not allowed to call them trannies anymore. You have to call them transgender. What gender that is, we have no idea because yeah, apparently you can be anything you want to be now. And like we often talk all the time, you know, uh, trannies that we knew didn't want you to know. No, no. They, they just they, wanted to get it over with as fast as possible. Yes. And that was from seeing a doctor that said, you obviously have a sexual orientation issue <coughs> let's work on it together it wasn't just random people out in public going i'm a tranny because i like to wear a dress yeah just because you wear a dress and have a wig on doesn't make you a transgender and you know the the real ones don't want you to know because they want to be passable yes. they, they're going for realism um it's not these crazy people with beards and makeup on and that's, that's, that's not a transsexual no or transgender. Um, or somebody who grows their hair long in the same extent. They put on an oversized t-shirt and wear Spanx and suddenly they identify as a woman. Yeah. You can't just identify as a woman. You can't just identify as a man. We're two completely different sexes. For a reason, mind you. you yeah. Know, we don't procreate to make children, but that's what the point of the whole idea of the two sex idea is. And people who are actually transgender... Uh, aren't relating to who they what genitals they've been given. Yeah. So doctors are there to help them find a way. It's either help them with okay. orientating themselves. Okay. Hold on. Correct. That goes down to that whole idea that gender is a social construct. I mean, I don't Does know. It? I don't know. Well, that's what they say. Oh, fair. I don't know what in the world <laughs> y'all are smoking to make you think that my willy is a social construct and that because of it I should be a man and act like a man, uh, that's just one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. But because it's kind of ironic when you have people who say, um, you dress up girls in dresses and boys in pants to give them a gender identity. And then the first thing you do when you say, By the way, I'm gonna be just... transgender is I'm gonna wear a pair of pants if I'm a girl and a dress if I'm a boy. I do have a bit of a retort to that. If you were Irish or what is it, Viking? You could wear a kilt, which could be similar to a dress. Well, that would be Scottish, and that would be the okay, second sorry. incident. My husband said, what? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you dare equate um, this transgender movement with something as important as like the punk movement, where basically they, they gave the middle finger and said, I don't like your establishment, I don't need your approval, I'm going to do my own thing, screw you, I and don't need did. it. And we did it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we were both punks back then. Um, these kids want to be gobbled up by the establishment and want to have Stop. everybody approve yes. of, of who they are. And I got to give you one big life lesson. Not everybody's going to like you. And the easier you get that through your head, doesn't mean you have to change everyone's mind, but it's just to be more comfortable with the person that you are. Okay, art. Okay, so art. <laughs> All right, you want to mention art? Okay. <coughs> well, something else to talk about. Okay, so, um, hit it. I'm a huge art fan. I paint. He's an art fan. I'm an art fan. More, more, <laughs> more, more, an, more animated art than anything. Fan. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, and it I'm has not art sure. on it. Uh, <laughs> no. I don't know. What else should we talk about? Something else well, we can stay with. We can stay with. We can talk about Sweden. Why do I can't? Why do we? So have we won't have to go back to that again because everybody else is already talking about <laughs> what? that. What? What's to talk about? With Sweden? Let's go back. Let's stay with art. Okay. So, I actually okay. don't know a lot about art. Um, 
I, I like to paint. Uh, I do some work. Um, it's I'm crafty like that. Uh, it's part of the reason why I love doing this. It's because of what I get out of doing it. Um, Go ahead. Okay. You're leading this here discussion. I've route. lost count. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. So I wonder seven. if that's why gossip knitting circles are actually quiet and the, the woman who's talking is sitting her work down in her lap and she's just ranting for a few minutes. Fools. Everybody gets a turn. You know, like just put your work down and go. You know, go for a minute. Well, that is one way to moderate a debate. Yeah, give them something to put in their hands. Yeah. <laughs> just, just say, hey. Who's got the talking stick? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> talking stick. All people do is scream at you nowadays. There is no discussion. No, I, it's I, kind of funny. I have, to, I have to mention Go this. Ahead. I have to mention this. The last couple of times I've had, <coughs> excuse me, alleged debates on the Facebook race. of all places, is I do try to be as cordial as possible. I don't name call, and I try to give my position and then ask for them to respond with their own information. information. And every single time someone says, well, I wasn't here for an argument. I'm leaving. Goodbye. What is it? You're a racist, <laughs> homophobic bigot. Homophobic? Homopho homophobic. Sorry, I've had a couple of words. Did you just flip the bird to these people? No, I said, Yes, hey. you did. That's not a you finger. You said, I said racist, oh, yes. xenophobic, <laughs> homophobic. <laughs> He's a homophone. I'm a homophone. Whatever the hell that is. I'm sure has something to do with music. It's words, isn't it? A homophone? Uh, yeah, it's a homophone is... Is that a word? No, that's... Shit, we're going to have to Google <gasps> homophone. Ow. Did you hear that? <laughs> I said shit. <laughs> okay. Was it in context to your story? <laughs> no. Okay, then. We're not having it. Damn it. Oh. Uh, um, a homophone is a word that's... No, it doesn't sound like it's... We'll look sounds, it up after That's a onomatopoeia. Shit. And here I am, a writer. It happens. So but in my own defense, I will have to say, I'm probably one of the only writers you will ever come across that doesn't own a pen. <laughs> yeah, so I've tried to write him journals before. He's like, I've got a stack of them. I've just never used them. Yeah, I've got I've got ten journals over the last 20 years. Welcome to technology. I had an argument with a friend of mine who was a teacher one afternoon. Um, also one that where the argument turned into just, I was a parent, an ignorant fool... Um, who was just unhappy with my education. Well, I was, I am unhappy with my education, uh, but part of that is my fault, but really I was one of those kids that fell through the cracks of the school system. Uh, with your ballast? Yeah, well, I'm a little clumsy. Uh, <laughs> you have no idea. Yeah, you really don't. I break shit all the time. It's funny. It's, funny. it's my superpower, by the way. You have no idea the dig I just gave you. I know, yeah, shut up. I fell through the cracks, Thanks. and I'm like, with this? this? <laughs> That's a big Yeah, Gregory's crack. sitting closer to the camera to make him look the same size as I am. He does. He's actually. Yeah, it's a we're an optical illusion. Yes, this is an optical. <laughs> if I sit, yeah. There we go. <laughs> now he's back as far as I am. Yeah. Uh, and don't you love our bed sheet? It will. It will change over time. I think we'll work on some sort of uh, background that puts up Mad Men knitting or maybe. That's we'll, what I should have yeah, done. Yeah. I should have worn my T-shirt. Yeah. But I gotta tell you, it's a little weird. It's like if Madonna were running around in her own t-shirt. Well, I'm tired. Madonna. I have to say, um, we get a lot of gist from people, not a lot, but some, about how what we do isn't considered a career or a job. Um, Gregor and I have only been together for, what, two years, two and a half years? Two. You're breaking three, my heart. It's been three years. Three years. <laughs> See, I'm so happy. My husband I, said what? What? Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> men aren't supposed to remember this shit. Some lady asked me about Valentine's Day the other day. I said I woke up and remembered. <laughs> yeah. Because for four days beforehand, I woke up every morning and saying Happy Valentine's Day. Yeah, and we sat there with this whole idea, like we were being questioned by the public's cashier, and she's just like, so did you do anything for Valentine's Day? We're like, no. no. Not really. I mean, why should day. we? I mean, it's like we, we love each other every day and we show it. Yes. Um, and then it's just not even chocolates or anything. I was like, no. Oh wait, wait I got a candy bar. I gave you Hershey's bar. And then after <laughs> Valentine's Day, I had this huge box of chocolates um, for like half price or whatever it was. It was yeah, really it was one of those big giant red heart Russell Stover's yes. chocolate mix bag things. Out of the thirty of them that were in there, there were two I didn't care for. Well, that's that good. Was brilliant. Those are good odds. Yeah, those were great but, odds. But um, 
<laughs> yeah, I'm and again, sure. my girl. Like I, I said, we're like poor, it. so I didn't buy him a box of chocolates on Valentine's Day. I had to wait until they were on clearance yeah. the next day, where they but, were seventy five percent. But back to the point I was making. We and get I could have saved it for next year, but his nose would have found chocolate in the house somewhere. Yeah, that would have lasted a year. Not this no. <laughs> um, my point was then you know we get people telling me that it's not a career, and since I was already rattled for not remembering how long we've been together. Um, <laughs> He's been writing and knitting longer than I've known him. And it brought him up from out of destitution and giving him his own place to live. He may not get a paycheck like everybody else does, and you may think his donate button is some sort of begathon. Uh, but if you ask his fans, uh, he's worth every penny that he gets from them. And our supporters. So I don't want people to tell him to his. I don't, I'm tired of people telling him to his face that what he's doing isn't a career. He's a he's a published writer and a well known, world known knitter. Thank you, sweetheart. Sorry, I just had to get that out of there. It's our first video. Let's get all this stuff out of the way. I don't think about it. I have criticism that comes at me from all places, and I just don't care. You know, it just doesn't. Who cares? Sure. I did. I love him. I love <laughs> See how her. big his head was compared to mine. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I get, I get, I get slings and arrows, but everybody does. Yeah. Um, when you put yourself out in the public, you have to expect it. You have to. And if you're gonna walk away crying with your tail between your legs and say people don't like me, yeah. you're, you're not equipped to. You're just not equipped. I mean. All these <clears throat> issues of bullying, I guess one of the best ways that you could frame it is um, if I'm going to really care about what someone says about me, then I really don't care about myself to begin with, and I'm looking for their validation. Then you better get some, you should probably get some help for that. You should. If you, if you I guess that's people, one way to put it. Yeah, I mean, really, this realistically, you should. Um, I, again, I, I, this helped me with my, a little bit of my self esteem issues myself. I'm able to create something out of my own hands that people really like, and it's astounded me from the get-go how much people have enjoyed the, the, the things that I make. Um, shit. Where are you um, going with this? I don't know. I just I, I really enjoy doing this, and I'm glad that I found this in such a late point in my life. Um, you mean the crocheting? Yeah, the crocheting. Um, All right. Well, thanks for watching our first episode of Knitter Be Damned. And it'll get better, and we'll have some categories and whatnot to discuss. Again, I'm new at this, and I'm learning as I go. And, um, and I actually have questions about the what I'm doing, so maybe some of you out there can help me answer them. Um, I know Gregory has a lot of information to share, uh, if that's what this turns into, but I don't know if we're going to turn it into that kind of video. What, an informational video? Well, like, it, are we going to do instructional video? Probably not, because... No. They're already out there. Yeah, you already can do that on your own. That's how I learned. I actually learned from Gregory about it, and he taught me the basics, and then I went online and found what I wanted to do. And yeah. surprisingly enough, and I love it, the things that I do aren't out there. They're similar, and there are things that are like it, but I'm kind of like a, the one-handed guy. The one-handed one guy? The one-handed guy. That's how I talk. That's what my, my husband, husband said, said what? this. <laughs> my husband said what? <laughs> I do that a lot. All right, so we are going to have also some um, some uh, guests uh, also on our little show. Yeah, yeah. So we have other friends of ours that, that crochet or knit that we're going to do podcast with, or I don't know if you call them podcasts. But okay, so. here's my philosophy. Uh, if you want to come on our show and talk to us about your nonsense while knitting and having a beer, um, ladies encouraged. Oh, excuse me, that's wrong. Why is it ladies and why is... Ladies welcomed, fellas encouraged. encouraged. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because we're not here to, offend, to offend, we're here to discuss. Oh, um, but we have offended people. No, oh, we already oh, well, <laughs> I offend people every day. I've lost friends after my for political nonsense and whatnot, and um, surprisingly from people who I shouldn't be losing to political ideas. They weren't your friends to begin with. If they allow something like that to... That's true. I, I'll agree with that. I'll agree with that. But is it a noticeable impact over the last uh, year and a half is that uh, political views, which is something we'll discuss on the show, 
only have, these elderly... can ruin people's lives for some reason nowadays. Yeah, and, and yes, it can. <laughs> People have attempted it. But I don't, I don't want you to feel like this is a political show, but it probably will be. But this is also kind of a show about... This young man right here lives for politics. I do, though. He does. But it's the, it's the greater idea that while you're sitting and knitting, you just let anything you want come out. Anything. Yes. Knitter be damned if you say something that is offensive. I would encourage it. I would say, go for it. Hit it. I mean, if we're going to be comfortable and knitting with each other and having a beer and just relaxing, I don't care what you have to say. It's not going to change our opinions on each other. It's just going to be an exercise of release. Absolutely. Thanks. You can, you can rant. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, enjoy the rest of your days. Or day. See? <laughs> my husband, my husband said, said what? what? Are you dying? <laughs> we don't know. Are we all dying? Oh, day? stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> Bye now. Bye.